station. This is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Houston, this is station. We are ready for the event. Ready for the event. Houston ACR, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for a voice check. Station, this is Houston ACR. How do you hear me? Houston ACR, this is Space Station. We have you loud and clear. How me? Loud and clear. Please stand by for opening remarks. Hello, my name is Commander Jeremy DeBonds, Commanding Officer of the United States Naval Test Pilot School at Naval Air Station Patuxent River, Maryland. We transform the world's finest aviators and engineers into critical thinking flight test professionals. Nearly 100 of our graduates are astronauts, and we're excited for the opportunity to engage with a couple of them today from the International Space Station. Now here's our first question. Hi, I'm Lieutenant Aaron Loft Overcash, and my question is, what has been the hardest part of adapting to microgravity? Thanks for kicking it off, Loft. We are excited to talk to uh, Navy TPS and to the students online. So the hardest part of adapting is your efficiency the first couple weeks. Uh, because there's no gravity in space, we have everything that's Velcroed down. And if it's not, when you open a bag, everything just kind of goes flying. And you can imagine you're such a mess when you're trying to get uh, <laughs> something done. So it's important that you take your time and you Velcro, everything has Velcro. Uh, we have Velcro on our pants, Velcro on the walls, and you need to make sure you put it there, keep an eye on it, because if you let it go, there's some airflow in station and it will float away, and I think we lose things at least two or three times a day. Hi, my name is Legree Wicker and I'm a fifth grader at Leonardtown Elementary. My question is, what advice would you give to elementary school students who want to be astronauts? Laguerre, we give the same advice to everyone, whether they're students or adults who want to be astronauts. And it's basically, find something you love and do it really, really well. Because there's lots of different paths to being an astronaut, whether it's medicine or test pilots, engineering or geology. As long as you love it and you show how great you are at it, I think NASA might come calling. My name is Lieutenant Commander Himanshu Chaudhary, and my question is, what do you suggest from the point of view of aerospace science we can add to the Naval Test Pilot curriculum to make future testers more suitable for space missions? Well, I'm part of the class of 130, so there's going to be a day when you're looking back thinking that 162 was a long time ago. Uh, but that's certainly how I feel right now talking to a member of the class of 162. Uh, I'll tell you, the, the background that we had coming through as test pilots was very applicable to what we're doing right now. Uh, primarily the, the ability to identify an issue and more importantly to be able to identify what your compensation is and be able to articulate that. That allows us to be able to forecast what's going to be a problem in the future, whether that be flying a robotic arm on approach to capture a cargo vehicle or it's being outside to kind of anticipate what's going to happen in a spacewalk and know what compensation you're going to have to put in effect uh, to, to prevent any problems you've got there. But I'll tell you, as we develop new spacecraft, the, there's a, a delicate balance there between uh, giving a, an operator almost too much uh, influence on the vehicle to, to actually create some human-created problems, but also making sure that, that that operator has enough essay and enough power to do something uh, to remedy any off-nominal situation. So that OMI, that operator machine interface, is a really important part, I think, of the next generation of testers. Hi, my name is Miana Mukveva, and my question is, what kind of job do astronauts do in space? Well, one of the coolest parts about being on the space station is that no day is like any other day. We get to do lots of different jobs. Sometimes we get to play 
chief medical officer. Sometimes we get to play plumber or electrician. Um, there's all sorts of things, but above all things, we get to play scientist. There's these amazing pr uh, experiments that get sent up to the space station on behalf of teams from universities or research centers throughout the world, and we get to perform those experiments for the scientists. So uh, I love the fact that every day is different, and we get to do lots of different things in space. And my question for you, Auntie, is I know you had a lot of training for this mission. What was something that you found unexpected or surprised you when you got on the space station? Hi, Reese. Uh, there are two things. One is time moves so fast. Not in reality, but um, you perceive it as moving quickly because everything is new and you're so busy throughout the day. Before I know it, it's lunchtime and I haven't eaten yet. And before I know it, we've had a 12-hour workday and it's time for dinner. Um, and so that is very surprising to me. The second thing is the view out the window. I thought it was going to be spectacular, and it's beyond that. It's indescribable how incredibly beautiful it is. And I'm working on taking some photos so I can share that with you when I get home. Hi, my name is Lieutenant Jordan Hernandez, and my question is, how much interaction and decision-making do you do with the scientific research and tests you conduct on the International Space Station? Lieutenant Fredericks, I uh, actually come from a science background. I was a physicist in my previous life before the Navy. And so um, I'm used to uh, having a lot of influence over the, over the experiments we're doing, uh, even as a grad student. And up here, we find ourselves kind of in that role, the role of a grad student, where uh, we're, we're finding direction from uh, the incredible researchers and uh, ground control teams that we have supporting us. Um, but I'll tell you, uh, we try to do our best to, uh, to fix the things that are broken and not break more stuff. Um, but uh, every so often we can lend some, some insight that we have just because we have the hands on and we're right here interacting with the experiments. Uh, but in terms of driving the actual uh, direction of the, the studies themselves, we leave that to the experts down on the ground. My name is Allison Kia and my question is what is your favorite space dessert or snack? You know, uh, eating is one of the favorite things we do here in space because for a change, we get to play with our food. So I love all sorts of snacks, Snickers bars, M&Ms, but one of my favorite things is gummy bears. Um, now, unfortunately, our uh, environment here on the space station can get a little dry, and so do the gummy bears. So I like to make them little pools and make them swim. They're great, but you have to be careful. A small bubble of water actually holds a lot of volume. He also sneezed at my name lunch. Is and it was Brad Frerichs, and my question is, were there any aspects of astronaut training that you found easier or more difficult given your background? Well, I'll tell you, uh, the Navy and uh, my education and Navy Test Pilot School prepared me really well uh, for the variety of things that we uh, tackle on a daily basis uh, in astronaut training. Um, we do a little bit of everything uh, every day, um, but I'll tell you the one thing that I wasn't quite sure about was uh, Russian language training. I didn't take much uh, foreign language as a kid growing up, and I wasn't quite sure how Russian was going to go. Uh, it turns out um, I really, really enjoyed it, and that was a bit of a surprise to me. Uh, most because the Russian language tends to be an algorithm. Um, so if you know the rules of the algorithm, uh, you, can, uh, you can figure out how to not sound uh, like a complete idiot, at least. Um, but it's, uh, it was really enjoyable to me, and it's a, it's a really rich language, and I enjoyed that a lot. But it was a challenge, for sure. Hi, my name is Brooklyn Warsdale, and I'm Nicole Mann's niece. And my question for you is, what is your schedule like on the space station? 
Hi, Brookie. My schedule and our schedules are insane on the space station. We wake up at 6 o'clock every morning, and you have some time for breakfast and to get ready. And then the workday starts at about 7.30 a.m. and goes until 7.30 p.m. Uh, it's a very long day, but it's a very rewarding work filled with uh, maintenance activities, a lot of really cool science that we get to do, definitely some downtime where you get to play with your food, and uh, some uh, photography out the window so that you can observe our planet Earth. Um, so it's uh, incredibly packed, but very rewarding. Hi, my name is Lieutenant Wes Chunk Henderson. My question is, do you think in the near future, civilian astronauts will be working regularly in conjunction with NASA astronauts in space? How will this be a challenge? Yeah, you know, uh, I love the fact that our mission includes the fact that we innovate and we discover and we explore for the benefit of humanity. And I think uh, one of those benefits is going to be that more and more people are going to get to go to space. So absolutely, I do think that we will be flying with civilian astronauts in the next decade or two. Uh, you know, anytime you put two human beings together, it's a challenge. But it can also be an amazing experience, like our team that we have here. And so I think we'll learn to work together, and uh, we'll learn to uh, discover in new ways. And overall, I think it'll be a really positive experience. And my question is, what kinds of things do you like to do with your free time aboard the space station? Well, hello. Like uh, Nicole was saying, we don't get a whole bunch of free time, I'll be honest. Uh, she says we have to get up at 6 to get it all done. I know that she's got a close personal friend who can get it done by getting up at 6.45. Um, but our days are really full, but we do get a couple hours uh, at, in the evenings, and we can probably sneak a peek or two out the window during the day. And to be honest, that's my favorite part. Uh, in addition to keeping up with my family, we can actually make phone calls and, and talk to our families and, and be kept up to speed on how their lives are going as well as letting them know how ours are going. Uh, but looking out that window, I'll be honest, looking at that atmosphere, you just realize how lucky we are to be from planet Earth. It is quite a place and we need to protect it. Hello, my name is Lieutenant Alex Dremer and my question is, how often is orbiting space junk a concern to astronauts in the space station? And do you see it becoming more of a problem in the future? Uh, space junk is something that we definitely keep track of and keep an eye on. We have teams on the ground that track all the objects that could be a threat to the International Space Station. And we have a safety boundary, kind of like a pizza box that goes around the space station. And anytime we predict that some space debris will enter that box, we actually move the space station out of the way. So we have the ability to avoid this debris. Um, yes, it is a concern, and I think it's something we need to be aware of in the future. The more things we put into low Earth orbit, the more difficult it's going to be to remain safe when you're operating in low Earth orbit. Hi, my name is Adley Wicker, and I am in third grade at Leonardtown Elementary School. And my question is, what experiment are you most excited to do in space? You know, we get to do so many cool things. Uh, I love the fact that we have a variety of experiments. One of those is going to be uh, helping to develop a possibility of developing organs up here in space. Uh, but I was also surprised how much I missed home and how much I missed my family and even just being able to go outside. So my favorite experiment is one where we're growing tomato plants. Uh, I love working with that little plant and just seeing it grow and develop. And uh, I actually got to f uh, harvest the first tomato that's ever been harvested in space the other day. And that was pretty special. So yeah, I think just uh, time with uh, something green is my favorite th thing to work on. My name is Annalise Chappelle, and my question is, what was the coolest part of astronaut training? Hey, Annalise, my favorite part of astronaut training was how variable it was. You would get to the end of a day, and it was an exhausting day, but to look back and see all the different things you had done throughout the course of the day, it was just mind-blowing. Whether it was working on ISS systems and understanding how this incredible spacecraft flies, whether it was learning your own launch vehicle on how to get here, 
or training the, on the robotic arm, Russian language training, and, and then some days we spend the entire day training uh, in uh, the spacesuit to do spacewalks. And then also on top of that, we fly the T-38. Uh, so to be honest, for me, it was just the most exciting part was being able to do so many different things throughout the course of the whole syllabus. Hi, my name is Flight Lieutenant Nathan Screech Siegel. My question is, how do you think test pilot skills used as an astronaut have changed over the years? I think the fundamental skills that we learn as a test pilot are still 100% applicable uh, today, and we use them on a daily basis. Like Josh mentioned, the uh, the ability to assess performance of a spacecraft, of a vehicle, of a robotic arm, and then to quantify that and communicate that to the engineers in order to affect change. We still do that on a daily basis. Additionally, you learn how to adapt so well at test pilot school. You're given a new aircraft. You're given you know, five days to learn that aircraft, and then you go fly it and do an evaluation on that. That's much like what we do in the astronaut uh, lives up here on the International Space Station. You're given a task, you quickly need to learn how to do it, and then you need to execute it, and you need to be able to communicate those results. And so that foundation that you're learning now is something that you'll put to use for the rest of your life. Hi, my name is Connor House, and my question is, when you were in test pilot school, did you ever imagine that you were going to go to space one day? In fact, I remember very specifically uh, our skipper, Skipper Huff, uh, asked our class, class 130, if anybody wanted to be an astronaut, if anyone planned on applying. Um, and it was pretty impressive to see some of the most incredible pilots in the world all raise their hand. It is something that I think uh, a lot of test pilots are very interested in, um, and uh, some of us are incredibly fortunate to be here, for sure. Um, but uh, it is something that uh, I definitely was excited about, uh, at least throwing my hat in the ring. It's a little bit like playing the lottery. Uh, you can't win if you don't buy a ticket, uh, but you probably should have a different retirement plan than that. <laughs> On behalf of the U.S. Naval Test Pilot School and our Southern Maryland community, I would like to thank the incredible team at NASA for this opportunity and the astronauts for sharing their time with us. Fly Navy. Fly Navy. Go Army. <laughs> Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you to all participants. Station, we are now resuming operational audio communications.